You crazy? You're acting like an animal! Hello and welcome back to the Immortal News Family. In today's heartfelt video, we bring to you the latest updates on the passing of some truly remarkable individuals within the last 24 hours. As a part of the Immortal News Family, we are committed to honoring and remembering those who have made a lasting impact in our lives and the world. If this video touches your heart, or if the stories of these extraordinary people have moved you, please show your respect and remembrance by giving this video a thumbs up. Thank you for joining us in this moment of reflection and tribute. Number 9. Tony Ganios, who passed away at the age of 64 leaves behind a legacy that stretches far beyond his iconic role in the 1981 fan-favorite film Porky's. His unexpected passing following emergency surgery for a spinal cord infection has left many mourning the loss of a beloved actor in person. Despite the surgery initially going well, Ganios tragically went into cardiac arrest the following day, a development that has deeply affected those close to him, including his fiancée, Amanda Ganios, who expressed her profound love and sorrow. He made a significant mark on the entertainment industry with his memorable performance in Porky's, a film that has remained a classic for its humor and portrayal of teenage antics. However, his impact extends beyond just one role. He was known for his larger-than-life personality, his dedication to his craft, and his ability to bring warmth and depth to his characters. His sudden departure has left a void in the hearts of fans, friends, and family who admired his work and cherished his presence in their lives. Amanda Ganios's poignant words, I love him so much, echo the sentiments of all who knew Tony Ganios personally or through his work. His contribution to film and the memories he leaves behind will not be forgotten. As the news of his passing spreads, many are coming together to share their grief and celebrate the life of a man who brought laughter, entertainment, and joy to so many. In remembering Tony Ganios, we honor not just the roles he played on screen, but the man he was off screen, kind-hearted, spirited, and profoundly impactful. His legacy will live on through his films, the stories shared by those who knew him, and the love that surrounds his memory. Tributes to Tony Ganios. Number 8. Robin Windsor passed away at the age of 44, left a memorable mark on the world of dance and television. As a former professional on Strictly Come Dancing, his talent and passion for dance shone brightly from 2010 until 2013, partnering with notable celebrities and leaving audiences captivated with his performances. His passing has been met with an outpouring of grief and heartfelt tributes from colleagues, fans and friends, who remember him not only for his extraordinary dance skills, but for his infectious personality, energy, and kindness. Strictly Come Dancing co-host Claudia Winkleman described his passing as heartbreaking, while presenter Tess Daly noted the sadness of his early departure, emphasizing how deeply his infectious personality, energy, and talent will be missed. Windsor's cause of death has not been confirmed, but his legacy as a remarkable dancer and a beautiful human being remains undisputed. Good Morning Britain's Susanna Reid praised Windsor for his strength, creativity, and enthusiasm for dance, recalling her own experiences dancing with him as nothing short of adoration for his incredible personality. Craig Revel Horwood and Shirley Ballas, judges on Strictly, echoed these sentiments, highlighting Windsor's kindness, honesty, and hard work. Ballas, in particular, mourned the loss of such a beautiful human being at a young age, reflecting a sentiment felt widely across the dance community and beyond. Beyond his contributions to dance, he was remembered for his advocacy for mental health and his willingness to support others. His legacy is not only in the art he created, but in the impact he had on those around him, from his co-stars and colleagues to the audiences who were moved by his performances. His journey from a young dancer in Suffolk to a celebrated professional on national and international stages is a testament to his talent, dedication, and the love he had for dance. His work with charities and his open heart made him a cherished member of the dance and television communities. As tributes continue to pour in, it's clear that his memory will live on, not just in the performances he gave, but in the lives he touched. Tributes to Robin Windsor.
Number 7. Cynthia Struther, the skilled half of the 1950s hit-making duo The Bell Sisters, passed away at the age of 88 from heart failure. Cynthia and her sister Kay gave joy and catchy tunes to a whole generation with their hit song Bermuda, catapulting them to popularity. Their immediate success led to appearances on radio shows hosted by legends such as Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, as well as television shows such as The Johnny Carson Show and The Mickey Mouse Club, among others. Born in Kentucky but reared in Seal Beach, California, her musical career began in high school, eventually leading to the founding of the Bell Sisters. The duo's distinct style and her songwriting abilities gained them a place in the hearts of millions, with hits like Wheel of Fortune and Hambone following the triumph of Bermuda. Their brilliance propelled them from local stages to worldwide tours, including a spectacular USO tour of Korea. Aside from her music career, she has dedicated her life to teaching swimming to disabled children and adults, demonstrating her compassion and desire to make a difference. Her legacy lives on in the people she impacted through her charity efforts, as well as the music that continues to delight listeners. Her contributions to music and her community were significant, leaving an enduring impression on both. She leaves behind her sister Kay, three sons, and a musical legacy that will continue to inspire. As we remember Cynthia Struther, we celebrate a life full of melody, kindness, and an enduring spirit that will live on in the hearts of those she touched by her music and giving. Number 6. Paul D'Amato, who passed away at the age of 75 after a courageous four-year battle with progressive supranuclear palsy, a rare brain disorder, leaves behind a rich legacy as an American actor cherished for his unforgettable role as the lead antagonist in the iconic hockey film Slapshot. His journey from Worcester, Massachusetts to the silver screen is a testament to his dedication to his craft, beginning his career in the arts as a stagehand at 14 and transitioning to acting by 21. His education at Emerson College not only honed his acting skills, but also allowed him to embrace his love for ice hockey, a passion that eventually paved the way for his memorable performance in Slapshot. His filmography, enriched by roles in movies like The Deer Hunter and Heaven's Gate, showcased his versatile acting prowess. However, it was his portrayal in Slapshot that immortalized him in pop culture, even inspiring the comic book character Wolverine's rendition by artist John Byrne. Beyond the screen, his stage presence in productions from Jean Genet's Death Watch to Shakespeare's Pericles' Prince of Tyre reflected his deep connection to theatrical arts. In his later years, he remained connected to his fans in the community, from dropping the ceremonial first puck at hockey games to supporting charitable causes. His engagement to Marina Re and his work as a boot fitter in a Vermont ski shop illustrated a life lived with passion both on and off the screen. Tributes to Paul D'Amato have highlighted not just his contributions to film and theater, but his character and spirit. Colleagues and fans alike remember him as much for his roles as for his kindness, humility, and the bravery with which he faced his final years. His legacy extends beyond his filmography, touching the hearts of those who knew him and those who were fans of his work. Tributes to Paul D'Amato. Number 5. Andreas Brema, a legendary figure in football, passed away at the age of 63 due to cardiac arrest. Known for his versatility, his career was marked by exceptional skill and memorable moments, not least of which was scoring the winning goal in the 1990 FIFA World Cup Final against Argentina, securing Germany's victory with a calm penalty kick in the 85th minute. This moment epitomized his cool under pressure and his ability to deliver when it mattered most. His journey through football took him from his beginnings in Hamburg to becoming a stalwart at clubs like one, FC Kaiserslautern, Bayern Munich, and Inter Milan. His time at these clubs was decorated with victories, including Bundesliga titles and a UEFA Cup, showcasing his impact at both domestic and international levels. Beyond his club's success, his international career with Germany was illustrious, 
participating in multiple UEFA European Championships and FIFA World Cups, always leaving his mark with goals that often came from his renowned set pieces. His versatility allowed him to play in various positions, though he shone brightest as an attacking fullback. Bremi was ambidextrous, a rare trait that made him unpredictable and invaluable on the field. He was as comfortable taking a penalty with his right foot as he was delivering a deadly cross with his left, embodying the complete footballer. After hanging up his boots, he transitioned into coaching, bringing his wealth of experience to roles at one, FC Kaiserslautern and other clubs, though with mixed success. Despite the challenges in his managerial career, his legacy as a player remains untarnished, remembered for his significant contributions to German football and his role in one of its most triumphant moments. Lothar Matthäus, a teammate and one of football's greatest, once described Breme as the best player he had ever played alongside, a testament to the high regard in which he was held by those who knew him best. Andreas Breme leaves behind a legacy that is not just about the goals he scored or the titles he won, but also about the spirit, professionalism, and resilience he displayed throughout his career. Tributes to Andreas Breme Number 4. Marion Halligan, an esteemed Australian writer, passed away at the age of 83. Her illustrious career spanned decades, during which she made significant contributions to literature, not only through her own writing but also through her support for the literary community in Australia. As a former school teacher and journalist, her transition to publishing short stories marked the beginning of a prolific writing career that would see her recognized as a leading figure in Australian literature. Born in Newcastle, New South Wales on April 16, 1940, her life was one dedicated to the arts and literature. Her involvement with the Canberra Seven, a group of women writers based in Canberra, underscored her commitment to fostering a vibrant literary culture. This collective, known for their mutual support and critique, published Canberra Tales in 1988, showcasing their diverse talents and solidifying their place in Australia's literary history. Her contributions were formally acknowledged when she was appointed member of the Order of Australia in 2006 for her service to literature. This recognition was not only for her own achievements as an author, but also for her dedication to promoting Australian writers and supporting literary events and professional organizations. Her legacy is also etched into the fabric of Canberra itself, with her work referenced in the art installation The Cushion and the Wedge at Garima Place symbolizing her lasting mark on the city's cultural landscape. Beyond her accolades, she was remembered for her insightful storytelling, her ability to capture the essence of Australian life, and her unwavering support for the literary community. Tributes poured in from colleagues, readers, and fellow writers, all of whom admired her generosity, her literary talent, and her mentorship to emerging writers. Her passing is a significant loss to the literary world, but her works and her influence will continue to inspire future generations. Tributes to Marion Halligan. Number three, Roland Bertin, a towering figure in French theater, passed away at the age of 93. An honorary member of the Comédie Française, he was celebrated for his profound contributions to the stage, notably receiving the Molière Award for Best Supporting Actor in 2009 for his role in William Shakespeare's Coriolan. His career was distinguished by a versatility and depth that brought to life a wide array of characters, from the cunning Volpone in Ben Jonson's play to the nuanced roles in works by Shakespeare, Goldoni, Chekhov, and Marivo, among others. His passion for the theater was matched by his dedication to his craft, with performances that spanned across decades, leaving an enduring mark on the French theatrical landscape. His entry into the Comédie Française in 1982 marked a significant milestone, where he embraced roles that ranged from the comedic to the dramatic, displaying a fearlessness and an ever-present desire to explore the human condition through his art. Beyond the stage, his talents were recognized in cinema and television, where he worked with renowned directors and contributed to critically acclaimed projects. 
Eric Ruffin paying tribute to Burton highlighted his unique spirit, his generous and Homeric anger, and his radical commitment to the art of acting. Ruff's words capture the essence of Burton's legacy, a man whose life and career were driven by a relentless pursuit of excellence and a deep love for the theater. His passing leaves a void in the world of French theater, but his contributions will continue to inspire future generations of actors and theater goers alike. His ability to infuse each role with authenticity, emotion, and a profound understanding of the human spirit made him a beloved figure on and off the stage. Tributes to Roland Bertin. Number 2. Eddie Mitchell, a pivotal figure in English football and the sports executive world, passed away at the age of 69. His contributions to football, especially with AFC Bournemouth, and his impact as a property developer, have left a lasting mark on the sport and communities he touched. Mitchell, affectionately known as Marmite Mitch, was renowned for his passionate involvement in football. He owned Dorchester Town FC and was notably the owner and chairman of AFC Bournemouth from June 2009 until September 2013. Under his leadership, Bournemouth experienced a historic rise from League Two to the Premier League for the first time since 1987, a monumental achievement that reshaped the club's destiny. Although he stepped down and sold his shares to Maxim Demon, his legacy at the club remains unparalleled. Beyond the pitch, he was a successful property developer, known for building over 1,000 homes in the prestigious Sandbanks area of Poole. His commitment to community and sport was further demonstrated through his restoration of Dean Court and his ownership of Elite Skills Arena, a company known for its high-tech football training products used by top clubs like Barcelona. His personal resilience was as remarkable as his professional achievements. In 2018, he survived a life-threatening health scare that saw him in a coma for three weeks followed by open-heart surgery. Despite these challenges, he continued to impact the football world and his community until his passing. His death has prompted tributes from many, including former Bournemouth manager Harry Redknapp, who recognized his substantial contributions to the club and football at large. His legacy is not just in the structures he built or the clubs he led, but in the lives he influenced and the community he fostered. Tributes to Eddie Mitchell. Today's top headlines. News 1. Ruby Franca, once celebrated for her parenting advice on the Eight Passengers YouTube channel and her business partner Jody Hildebrandt, have been sentenced to prison. The charges came to light after a harrowing incident where one of her children escaped from Hildebrandt's residence, seeking help from neighbors. The duo pleaded guilty, leading to Franca receiving four consecutive prison terms, with each term potentially lasting from 1 to 15 years. Hildebrandt faces a similar sentence, with the final determination of their prison time resting in the hands of the Utah Board of Pardons and Parole. This case has sparked widespread discussion on the responsibilities of online influencers and the real-life implications of their actions. Frankie's YouTube channel, which was once a source of parenting tips, came under scrutiny for its content even before the charges. The sentencing not only marks a pivotal moment in holding individuals accountable for their actions, but also serves as a cautionary tale about the influence and impact of digital personas on real-world behavior. As the community reflects on this tragic case, the focus now shifts to the well-being and future of Franca's family, who are navigating the aftermath of these revelations. News 2. Disney Channel star Bridget Mendler announced she has become a mother through adoption. Breaking her social media silence since November 2022, Mendler took to X, formerly known as Twitter, to share the joyous news of adopting a four-year-old boy. The 31-year-old actress, known for her beloved role in Good Luck Charlie, shared a heartwarming photograph of her new family, including her husband and son, against the picturesque backdrop of a beach at sunset. Mendler, who began her acting career at the tender age of 11, has always captured the admiration of her audience with her talent and now, her journey into motherhood. 
She revealed that her path to adoption began with fostering in 2021, culminating in the official adoption near Christmas of 2022. Alongside embracing motherhood, Mendler is set to embark on a new venture as the CEO of Northwood Space, a startup she co-founded with her husband, Griffin Cleverly. The company, which aims to innovate in the tech space, was inspired by the couple's creative endeavors during the pandemic, marking a new chapter in Mendler's life that blends family, philanthropy, and entrepreneurship. Number one, Vladimir Makaronets, a luminary in the Russian film industry, passed away at the age of 76. His career spanned several decades, during which he made significant contributions as a director of photography, producer, and film director. Makaronets was also the head of the Ural Department of the Russian Union of Filmmakers and president of the Ural Guild of Cinematographers. Born in Sverdlovsk, his journey in filmmaking began at the tender age of 16 when he started working at the Sverdlovsk Film Studio. His dedication to the craft led him to graduate from the Gerasimov Institute of Cinematography in 1979, laying the groundwork for a distinguished career in cinema. Over the years, he worked on 56 films, including both live-action and documentary films, and directed five films, showcasing his versatility and commitment to storytelling. One of his notable works, The Golden Snake, where he served as both director and producer, exemplifies his talent for captivating audiences and his ability to weave compelling narratives. His influence extended beyond his filmography, as he played a pivotal role in shaping the cinematic landscape in Russia, especially within the Ural region. His passing marks the end of an era for Russian cinema, but his legacy lives on through the films he crafted and the impact he had on the industry. Colleagues and cinephiles alike remember him not only for his artistic achievements, but also for his leadership and dedication to fostering a vibrant film community in the Ural region. His life was a testament to the power of cinema in capturing the human experience and the enduring value of storytelling. As we reflect on his contributions, we are reminded of the permanent mark he has left on the world of film. Tributes to Vladimir Makarinets.